We're going to continue factoring polynomials. This is part two, and we're on example three. Factoring by grouping. All right, if you remember when we were talking about the definitions, I said this was easy to pick out because there's usually four terms. See, there's four terms in each of these examples. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we factor by grouping, that means we're going to group the first two terms together and the second two terms together. So we can do that using parentheses. Okay, so if we just group those together, now we can look at them separately. So they still go together, but we're just going to look at them one at a time. So the first binomial, z cubed plus 5z squared, both of these terms have z. And if I want to factor out my greatest common factor, z squared. So I can factor out a z squared from both terms. So there's z squared. And then z squared goes into z cubed one more time. Remember, factoring is like undoing this. So it's like opposite of multiplication. So z squared times z to the first power would be z cubed. So this has to be equivalent to this when you multiply it back together. And then z squared from 5z squared is just 5. So that's just going to be z plus 5. And I don't need the exponent there. I just want you to see that's how that uh, z cubed comes about. All right, so the second binomial, they both have a negative sign. So I know I'm going to factor out a negative. And 4 and 20 both are divisible by 4. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4. If I factor a negative 4 out of the first term, it leaves me with z. And if I factor negative 4 out of the second term, it leaves me with plus 5. Remember, this is going to multiply back like um, distributive property. So negative 4 times z is negative 4z. Negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. So it's easy, quick way to check it. So factoring again is just the process of rewriting something. Now you can see that this is my greatest common factor, so I have z plus 5. And then my other term is going to be z squared minus 4. z squared minus 4. Now this is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square, so I'm still not done. So bring down my z plus 5. Can't lose that. But then this is a difference of squares, so I'm going to have z times z is z squared, 2 times 2 is 4, and then a difference of squares, you have opposite signs in the middle. So again, z times z is z squared, minus 2z plus 2z, cancel the middle term, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So this is your completely factored form. All right, b part, again, we're going to factor by grouping. All right, B part, we've got 3P cubed minus 12P squared minus 27P plus 108. So I'm going to factor by grouping again, but I can see that 3, 12, and 27 all are divisible by 3. Let's see if 108 is divisible by 3 as well. So 3 goes into 9 three times with one left over. 3 goes into 18 six times. So 3 does go into this 36 times. So what does that mean? That means before we factor by grouping, we need to pull out our greatest common factor. So that's something that you always need to do is look for your greatest common factor. So we've got 3p cubed. 3 goes into 12 four times. 3 goes into 27 nine times. And then 3 goes into 108 36 times. All right, so once we fa factor out the greatest common factor, then we can still factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and add our parentheses here. So we're going to bring the 3 down again as part of our answer. But now we're going to factor out a p squared. So p squared is factored out of the first binomial. So I've got p squared times p minus 4. And then I'm going to have negative 9 factored out of the second binomial. So negative 9 times p and negative 9 times negative 4 is 36. 
All right, so three is already part of our answer. So now we're going to have our next greatest common factor is our P minus four. And then we have P squared minus nine. P squared minus nine. All right, again, perfect square, perfect square, difference of squares. So we still are not finished. So we're going to have three times P minus four. And then we're going to have P plus three and p minus three all right so this is going to be completely factored form all right c part x cubed minus 48 plus 3x squared minus 16x so for this one it does have four terms but the first thing let's go ahead and put this in standard form it's easiest to factor when it's in standard form because it has our exponents from highest to lowest, which means when we factor by grouping, these higher exponents are together. So four terms, again, leads me to factor by grouping. The first one, I'm gonna factor out an x squared, and I'm gonna be left with x plus three. And the next one, both have negative, so I know it's gonna be negative. 16 goes into 16. Does 16 go into 48? So 15 goes into 45 three times. So 16 goes into 48 three times. So the answer is yes. So I'm going to factor out my negative 16 and x plus 3. All right, so I'm going to have x plus 3. That's my greatest common factor here. And then I have x squared minus 16. Once again, that's a difference of squares. So I've got x plus 3. I don't know what I did there. Let's see if I can rewrite that. Got ahead of myself here. All right, so I'm going to have x plus 4 and x minus 4. Again, a difference of squares, same binomial, different sign in the middle, makes that middle term cancel nice and easy if you know your multiplication tables. All right, that's all for example three. All right, so here's a self-assessment. It's good to practice on your own because it always looks easier when you're watching someone else do it than when you're trying to do it yourself. So take a few minutes and try to factor each of these and then answer each of these questions here. I will just pause the video, come back shortly to see if your answers match. All right, I'm not going to spend much time going over these as you can check these yourself. So just kind of pause the video again. Check to make sure you got the same answer. If you did not, please reach out to me and we can talk about where you went wrong. All right, example four, determining whether a linear binomial is a factor. All right, so in the last section, we did polynomial division. All right, so this is kind of back thinking about that as well. So we are looking at factors. So this is a factor if it divides evenly into this and gives you a remainder of zero. So that's basically what this says. A polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k. In this case, it's x minus two. So k would be two. If and only if f of k equals zero. So that means when you plug in the number k, you get zero. So that's easy. So let's look and see what happens here. A lot of people miss this on the EOC. All right, having a little bit of trouble with my calculator, but I got it back now. All right, so again, K was two, not negative two, K is two. So your factor is x minus k if and only if f of k equals zero. So we're gonna take two and substitute it for x. So let's say two cubed plus two times two squared minus four times two. So what we've done is replace x here with 
2. Okay, so in this case, that would be our k value. If that equals 0, that means this is a factor. And the answer is 8. So that means x minus 2 is not a factor of this polynomial. So basically, we would say f of 2 equals 8. So that means x minus 2 is not a factor of the polynomial above, f of x. All right, let's look at the other example. So x plus 5 is a factor of f of x. So we're trying to determine whether this is a factor of this polynomial or not. All right, so again, we're going to look at the factor theorem. So it would be x minus k. In this case, k would be negative 5. So I can plug that into this expression the same way I did before. So let's see if that is a 0 of the function. So I'm going to have 2 times, I'm going to do negative 5 cubed plus 11 times negative 5 and then squared and then plus 2 times the negative 5 is my x again and then minus 15. All right, so what you want to do is make sure that you've typed this in exactly the way it is, except in place of x, I put my k value, which is negative 5 this time. So if this is 0, that means x plus 5 is a factor. So we got f of negative 5 equals 0. So that means x plus 5 is a factor of f of x. All right, and over here, reading, in other words, x minus k is a factor of f of x if and only if k is a zero of the function. Remember, a zero is where it crosses the x-axis. It's a solution of the polynomial. In a study tip in Part B, notice that direct substitution would have resulted in more difficult computations than synthetic division. All right, so we did just plug it in exactly like we did this one. They're saying if we'd have done synthetic division, that would have been a little quicker and easier. It's probably about the same in my opinion, but uh, whatever you prefer. Again, we learned synthetic division in the last section.